empty talk is over. Now arrives the hour of action. Eight years ago, when Barack Obama took office, he promised an unprecedented level of openness in government. And journalists coming out of the Bush years liked what they were hearing. However, Obama's media legacy, his record on press freedom, has more darkness to it than light on whistleblowers, leakers, and the journalists they worked with. Under Obama, federal investigators went after the New York Times, Fox News, and the Associated Press. And his Justice Department spearheaded more prosecutions under the Espionage Act, a law passed 100 years ago than all previous U.S. administrations combined. Liberal Americans have given Obama a relatively free pass on his track record with the news media, saying he should be given more credit for his work on transparency and in his final days in office for commuting the sentence of Chelsea Manning, the U.S. soldier jailed for leaking classified information to the news media through WikiLeaks. Obama did talk a good game, reiterating with his trademark eloquence his commitment to freedom of the press. However, actions over the past eight years speak louder than words. And when the new president is confronted with the next major leak of classified material, the legal precedents established under Barack Obama will make it easier, not harder, for Donald Trump to jail those responsible for the story. The Listening Post's Flo Phillips now on what Barack Obama's media legacy could mean for journalists and their sources under Donald Trump. On January 20th, the 44th President of the United States swore an oath to the American people. It was 2009, and President Barack Obama promised to... Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The First Amendment of that Constitution relates specifically to freedom of the press, something that President Obama declared a priority on his very first day in office. He issued a memorandum relating to the Freedom of Information Act, or FOIA, committing his administration to a new era of open government, reaffirming a commitment to accountability and transparency. I think he made a couple of good moves. I think he also ran into some obstacles he wasn't quite expecting. That was the time period in which we had the Manning, Julian Assange, WikiLeaks data dump. Then we later had the Snowden release. And I think Obama really, throughout his presidency, wrangled with how to handle uh, controlling that highly sensitive information. It's really been a tremendous disappointment. The Obama administration started out really strong, and he said all of the right things about FOIA and transparency and government openness. But in the end, eight years later, we've seen a huge number of FOIA requests that have gone unanswered, an incredible number of prosecutions of leakers under the Espionage Act, and there has been a tremendous amount of pressure on the journalists as a result. In their dogged pursuit of whistleblowers and leakers, the Justice Department and the FBI under Obama turned their focus on journalists themselves. In 2012, the Associated Press, one of the largest press agencies in the world, uncovered what it called a massive and unprecedented intrusion by the Justice Department. The DOJ were on the hunt for the source behind leaked information about a CIA operation in Yemen. They went directly to the AP's phone providers and scooped up a trove of reporters and editors' phone records. The scope of it was astonishing. 20 reporters and editors, home phones, personal computers, they went for all of this information. But probably the most outrageous point is when someone leaked information about an investigation in North Korea. And James Rosen from Fox got the information, went on Fox with it. They named him as a co-conspirator. As a reporter, I will always honor the confidentiality of my dealings with all of my sources. It was the first time that a journalist was made a criminal for doing his job of reporting. Which takes us to the case of New York Times reporter James Risen. Risen was subjected to seven years of subpoenas, responses, appeals, one that went all the way to the Supreme Court, as well as the threat of imprisonment, all for refusing to reveal the source who provided him with details about a botched US operation to disrupt Iran's nuclear program for his book, State of War. I refused to testify or, or reveal any of my sources. And uh, finally, in 2015, uh, 
the uh, Obama administration gave up and stopped trying to get me to testify. But it led to some bad law. The Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals sided with the government and issued a ruling that basically says there's no such thing as a reporter's privilege. Reporter's privilege derives directly from the First Amendment of the US Constitution. It outlines a reporter's protection under law from being compelled to testify about confidential information or sources. In Risen's case, this protection was fundamentally challenged. It set a very bad precedent. It means that uh, there's no legal right, at least in the whole region where the Pentagon and the CIA and the NSA are, for reporters caught up in leak investigations to refuse to testify. And that means that the only recourse a reporter has is simply to agree to go to jail rather than reveal their sources. It's uh, going to be one of the legacies of the Obama administration on press freedom. And legacy, as his commuting of Chelsea Manning's 35-year sentence highlighted this past week, is something that really matters to President Obama. In 2013, the Committee to Protect Journalists published a report in which it called the Obama administration's war on leaks and other efforts to control information the most aggressive scene since the Nixon administration. In a 2016 interview, Obama himself was at pains to restate his pro-press credentials. I am a strong believer in the First Amendment and the need for journalists to pursue every lead and every angle. And with the Justice Department facing a barrage of criticism over its dealings with the media, it issued new guidelines on when the government can subpoena reporters to try to force them to reveal their sources. The guidelines that the Justice Department issued, saying these are new rules to protect journalists from unwarranted prosecution and subpoena demanding that they testify, Protection from who? It's protection from the same Justice Department for the last six years. That's what it would be protection from. But there is a loophole in there. And there's a loophole in there that waives everything if it's a case of national security. And that loophole is what keeps many a journalist awake at night. Because should the Trump administration choose to take as hardline an approach as the Obama administration has, then the outlets that publish CIA leaks alleging Russian meddling in the election and those personal details of a Russian dossier on Trump could find themselves in very hot water. It is possible that the Justice Department will be able to make a showing that says that this information is vital to their criminal investigation into a leak and arguably they could hold a journalist in contempt uh, if the journalist continues to refuse to reveal their sources. If the journalist does refuse and is held in contempt, then the journalist could be sent to jail. Since you are attacking no, our news not organization, you, not can you. you give us a chance? Your organization you're, you're is attacking terrible. our Don't be you're rude. Attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you no, give I'm us not a question? Give you a I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You stay, can you stay categorical? You are fake news. Sir. Trump's mercurial temperament has set journalists on edge over how the next four years might play out. And his pick for attorney general, Senator Jeff Sessions, is only heightening those concerns. Decisions the Justice Department makes have great impact on how the rest of the federal agencies will interpret transparency laws. And if, for example, Jeff Sessions becomes attorney general, he is not known for his open-mindedness when it comes to the media. Obama has absolutely handed Trump uh, not just the roadmap, the keys to the kingdom, how to clamp down on the press. And for all of Obama's talk about now, as he's searching for a legacy about how much he loves the press. Settle down, guys. You all right? Trump has none of that love for the press, and he's happy to tell you how much he hates the press. So why wouldn't he use that opening? 